Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I want to talk to you about the high ram manifold and compare it to the rod mod manifold and some other manifolds. Um, it's common that like Gen 4 LS 6 liter and 6 2 liter guys I want to run the high ram on a naturally aspirated combo. It's a cool racy looking manifold and everybody assumes it's worth big gains. And it can be a way to add some really good power to a naturally aspirated combination but only if the combination is suited for the manifold. Um, without a doubt, it produces more power during our 2019 GPI intake manifold shootout. We used a stock board stroke LS3 with our GPI ported OEM cylinder heads, stock 10.71 compression, and our SS4 no fly cut camshaft. And the high ram yielded 656 horsepower at 7,400 RPM. And compared to the ported and rod modded OEM intake, uh, that made 618 at 6800. So nearly 40 horsepower more, it seems like the high ram is the obvious choice. However, what a lot of folks do not consider is the RPM range required to take advantage of the gains that the high ram gives you. Uh, runner length along with camshaft has a major influence on the operating RPM range where you're going to make your best power and your highest average power. The factory LS3 manifold has a runner length of about nine and a quarter inches, whereas a high ram is much shorter at six and a half inches. The result is that given the same camshaft, the high ram will shift peak power up about 600 RPM. You'll also find that power in the RPM range ahead of the peak suffers and that the power beyond the peak carries out much stronger. So consider this dyno chart capped at 7,000 RPM a practical limit for most of your run-of-the-mill heads cam combos with standard valve trains using OEM or OEM style lifters, 660 springs, and a solid stem intake valve. Um, you can see under that kind of limit, the high ram isn't even capable of reaching its peak power RPM. And uh, in fact, over that 5,000 to 7,000 RPM range, the two manifolds will produce the exact same average power, 582 horsepower. This is why high rams don't belong on combinations that are not configured for them. A high ram's going to need to rev out 700 to 1,000 plus more RPM to give you everything it's capable of. And that power band is going to start about 1,500 RPM later than the stock style long runner manifold. This impacts a couple key areas of the combination, the valve train, the torque converter, and the rear gear ratio. For 7,600, 8,000 RPM You'll need lightweight intake valves, either a hollow stem LS3 valve or a titanium valve. You're going to need to have a valve spring that's 160 pounds on the seat and, you know, 470 plus open. And then with that sort of spring pressure, uh, plan on either a bush trunnion or a rocker, uh, a shaft rocker system. And a high quality and preferably short travel lifter like a Johnson 2110R or a 2116 LSR. And then converter and gearing is going to be platform and vehicle specific, but in general, stall speed is going to need to be north of 5,000, maybe closer to 5,500 RPM to give you the best performance from a dig. Gearing in an auto car is probably going to need to target north of 7,000 through the traps, probably 391s for 6L80 cars and 410s for your 3-speed or 4L80 cars with a 1 to 1 third gear ratio. And then stick shift cars are going to need even more gear ratio to hope to have the kind of starting line ratio needed to get a good launch with even less low and mid-range torque. And the stick shift cars also suffer from much poorer shift recovery, and they're going to need to shift at 8,000 plus to make their best average power. A 410 would be a minimum requirement, and something like a 456 to 488 gear is going to be closer to optimal. Keep in mind fitment, the high ram doesn't clear factory hoods and cowls, so you can plan on cutting those up. And the high ram gains also reflect uh, a 102 millimeter throttle body, which is about half of the gain. So the expense of the manifold, the throttle body, plumbing the fuel system, the vacuum system, the induction system, and then all the fitment is easily going to exceed $2,000. So the high ram is an awesome manifold, don't get me wrong, it's the way to go for you max effort guys. Um, but especially in a naturally aspirated combination, it needs to be paired with the right overall combination to give you its best. On uh, the Gen 5 LT stuff, the story is a little different, partly because of the way the engine responds to the manifold, but also due to the tight ratios of the 8-speed and the 10-speed transmissions, they have such minimal shift recovery 
and such an incredible starting line ratio that they really work with that type of power curve much better. Six shift LT cars are in the same boat though. They ain't going to need to turn big RPM to make that manifold work. So thanks for stopping by the channel. Hope this sheds a little light on the uh, on the high ram and why it might be or might not be right for you. Um, always appreciate your comments and uh, the discussion below. Thanks and have a great afternoon.